for coming back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the lunch. Uh, this is, uh, of course, a special talk because it's the last talk um, of uh, this uh, workshop. Yeah, and um, I hope you still reserve some of your energy for this interesting talk of Lekhat Sharman Patek. Patek. <laughs> Department of Linguistics, my department, 
when we do uh, domestic researches. So but I have the and some more will go up. Uh, and so we have from uh, 123 officially and 123 languages, 125 caste. So it's a uh, linguistically and ethnically very diverse uh, case. So 94, 19 mother tongues were spoken by 96% of the population, while 104 languages were spoken by 4% of the total population. <coughs> Nepal is spoken by 44.64% uh, of the population in 2011, which was reported to be spoken by 48% in 2001, because in later censuses, they realize that maybe they speak uh, different languages. So uh, Nepali is the national language. So because of uh, the identity issue, so they do not want to uh, affiliate with Nepali and they want to name their uh, uh, native language. Mm -hmm. So the majority of the population, 59% uh, were reported to be monolinguals. Uh, it's a multilingual country with a lot of monolingual population. And 41% of the population speak at least one second language. So most of these sources from CBS population monograph published in 2014. Uh, there was a linguistic uh, scenario, uh, literacy situation. Overall literacy rates uh, have increased to 67% in 2011 from 54% in 2001. Female literacy has increased from 43% in 2001 to 58% in 2011, which places Nepal in fourth position among SAR countries and about Bhutan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. About 90% of the adolescents can read and write. Similarly, 69% of the population are attending school. Literacy rates of urban and rural areas stand at 82.3% and 62.5% respectively. So, higher literacy in urban area and lower in rural area. Kathmandu have the highest literacy rate, while Rathar uh, is a southern district in the plains and the lowest. So, these are some of the figures from uh, the population monograph. So uh, on the right hand side, we have the number of illiterates. <coughs> so the total number of uh, illiterates are 8,127,204, uh, and which is divided into urban and rural. So again, this was mostly on rural, 7,300,530, and uh, 6,23,634 in uh, Seven forty-three thousand in urban area. Again, with ecology side also, so Nepal has three uh, distinct geographical region, ecological zones: mountain, hill, and terai. Terai are the plains, which border uh, <coughs> India, and the mountains are the high altitude areas which border uh, China, and the hills in between. So very often, uh, when people from Nepal, uh, we have some of the highest mountains in the world, and when we go to the Europe and all that, and when they saw up their mountains, they look like hillock to us. They are very small. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you call this uh, mountain, no, we don't even call this hills. <laughs> so uh, uh, you can see this, uh, the number of illiterates in, uh, so we have both, uh, consistently the male uh, uh, literacy is higher, and uh, female literacy wise is higher, so that way number goes down for male. Uh, so likewise, if you see mountain, so 215,412 for male and uh, 408,222 for female, so that way that's how it goes. Uh, uh, the reason why there are less illiterates in mountain and more in uh, Tarai or plains is also because of the, the population density. Uh, population density itself is low in the high altitude mountains. So that they, uh, if you average the entire thing in the national scenario, so that, that goes up. Uh, whereas population density is very high in the plains. So that way you see even the number of literates also very high. Um, so likewise, uh, we had five developing regions earlier when 2011 census was conducted. Uh, now, uh, with the new constitution in place, with the monarchy gone and republic in place, uh, uh, the whole, there is a, uh, uh, restructuring of uh, the political divisions within the state. Uh, so in place of five developmental regions, we have seven states. So but then uh, that doesn't make any difference to the, the geography and also the population. Or it's only the boundaries have been redrawn within the state itself. So likewise, it goes on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going into each of this, so just to give a picture of how it's like. So that's a map of uh, uh, the literacy. Uh, so, uh, um, 
So mostly the male, even the map also shows uh, the density of male literacy very high and uh, female very low. And you can see the eastern part has higher literacy and the western part uh, has very low uh, literacy, uh, especially among women and all. Um, okay, so these are, uh, this is a table uh, with uh, five years age-wise accounting. I don't think you really need all that kind of data right now because that may not be very important. So by age group and sex and all that sort of division, that I'm going a bit fast on this, so I'm not uh, fixing any more problems. Uh, okay, so that's on uh, ecological wealth, mountain field and all that. Uh, so it, this is an increase uh, kind of thing. Obviously every 10 years uh, with uh, government programs and all that, the literacy level keeps going up and the illiterate number of literates keep going down. Uh, Okay, so this is again the detailed division of that, so I'm skipping this. So uh, briefly, so this is uh, literacy population of uh, six years and above in uh, persons from 1971 to 2011. So if you see that, uh, so uh, the female literacy is increasing, uh, compared to it's always lower, even lower to the national average, and obviously lower to the male literacy uh, throughout uh, uh, till the last census. Um, so this is uh, inter-sensual uh, uh, change in literacy where with every succeeding census uh, there is improvement in literacy rate. So this is a comparison in uh, South Asian countries, only Afghanistan's uh, data is not here. Uh, so uh, highest is Sri Lanka with 97, 96%, followed by Maldives 94, followed by India 74, followed by Nepal 67, and that is Bangladesh at the worst. 56, so, so Nepal stands somewhere in the middle, you know, in the south uh, scenario. So, uh, so after going back, uh, I went back to my university from uh, CNCS Hyderabad. So whatever skills training I had got there, so I initiated uh, a lab in my own department uh, while teaching psycholinguistics and started giving them a project on designing a psycholinguistic experiment and uh, doing some studies. So, uh, one of, so two of these are ongoing, uh, my literacy effect on executive control and effect of edge literacy on L1 and L2 language processing. So the first one uh, that Savita is doing for her master's thesis, we had a poster yesterday and it's still outside. Uh, so I'm presenting briefly on that also. And the other one, uh, which actually shows a kind of uh, cognitive science interest uh, in the effect of uh, L2 literacy and how does it affect L1 and L2 uh, spoken in uh, written language. So uh, on executive control, <coughs> so um, I, I use uh, mouse tracking. So it gives, uh, it's a behavioral measure, uh, but it's give very uh, rich online uh, data. So it's uh, 70, it's 60 to 70 hertz. So we, so every 15 uh, millisecond, so we get one data point. So that way uh, it can, and it also it gives a, a very complex and rich uh, trajectory uh, when you initiate the mouse movement till you make the response by clicking the response button. All that uh, decision making process, all the cognitive dynamics that goes on uh, is captured uh, through the mouse, tra uh, mouse movement trajectory. So, uh, so, and, and the, the data it, it generates is very complex, so you can analyze the data in normalized time and lower time. Uh, you can measure initiation and reaction time, and you can also measure overall uh, effect, so all sort of things. In fact, even it's much richer, richer data, obviously compared to other button press uh, kind of experiments. Uh, so that way it's uh, quite good in that sense. Uh, so in this, we had uh, we took uh, teenagers uh, in the by the by literacy effect. So we have broadly two types of schools in one. Uh, one uh, kind of schools are called community schools, which are government-run schools, and other schools are private schools, which are called institutional schools. So uh, mostly uh, in private schools, uh, the fee is high, and uh, the mostly the dominant minimum instruction is English. So mostly the parents who can afford, they send their children to the private boarding schools. They are called boarding schools. Uh, 
uh, whether they have boarding facilities or not, still they need a term boarding school. Uh, and other uh, community schools which are government funded, government supported, uh, the teachers are very well trained. You know, they are also selected from very rigorous uh, teacher selection commission and all that. But because of uh, politicization and all that, uh, and uh, lack of controlling mechanism, uh, they don't take uh, their job very seriously, so they don't do a very good job. And then at the end, the children do not get good education, and so that's why parents, they just take them off from these schools and then send them away uh, to private schools. But in recent days, because of this, there was a lot of blame on the government and also on the schools, so they were sort of being humiliated uh, national, nationally. So now there is a change. So many of the government schools are actually starting to get better now. Uh, so uh, we decided to uh, conduct this study uh, in the government run schools because the situation is different. So mostly the medium of instruction in government school is uh, L1, Nepali medium instruction. And, uh, uh, and recently they are also adapting towards uh, English medium instruction. So we wanted to see, if, uh, so we had to control uh, the A's, uh, the socioeconomic status. Uh, and also the type of school, uh, so that we can actually compare uh, the results. So we have two schools uh, in the same neighborhood, so that there won't be much of difference uh, in the, the, the uh, all uh, socio-economic education and uh, type of school and all that. So uh, one school where it was uh, mostly uh, in L1 instruction, and another school where it was both. Uh, it was L1 uh, Nepali uh, medium instruction and also English medium instruction. So then we design uh, this task. So I designed, uh, so I want to study bilingualism. So uh, I modified the, the common uh, monolingual task, uh, the flanker and stoop task. These are mostly used in monolingual situations. So I made them all entirely bilingual. So I also uh, designed uh, the base map. So where without experimental manipulation, they just have to click uh, the mouse, the response. So that we could only measure uh, the, mouse click uh, response time, uh, which we could compare with the experimental manipulation in stroke and flank task. So the response was uh, both in English and Nepal, uh, baseline. Uh, I'll show you some okay. So this is the, so this was between subject design. And so participants, we have 77. So this is, we are still collecting more data. So of this uh, group one, group one is uh, L1 uh, instruction. And uh, so where we had 40 and with uh, 19 males and group two uh, English medium instruction with uh, 19 males, uh, this was 737. So all 19 teenagers traveling to different schools of Kathmandu. So mean is 115. Uh, so it's similar in both uh, the groups. Uh, mean uh, L2 um, uh, age of acquisition was uh, 6.5 years, 5.5 years close. And so we also did uh, Lextel, uh, Lextel uh, to measure uh, L2 uh, lexical decision. Uh, so that how do they do? Because even in L1 minimum instruction, also there will be some uh, English because there is English as a subject. So that way we wanted to compare that. And then we didn't find much of a difference. So even uh, the L1 minimum instruction, they did fairly well. We had 54.39% uh, uh, with 5.4% uh, deviation. Whereas the L2 instruction was better, it is open in the So it was a look and click task where the participant had to mouse click the corresponding response as per instruction. We also, so we had this task so baseline, flank and stroke, all bilingual condition. So we also uh, use verbal frequency task, both L1, L1, L2 production task. Uh, so uh, in English, we have the standard FAS. In Nepali, uh, because we don't have standard uh, letters yet, so so what you do, what you did is uh, we we have we have a corpora. Uh, so from the corpus, so the most frequent uh, letters which were there. So we took the first uh, three most uh, frequent letters from the words were made. So we took them so that they would be more uh, frequent in Tamil. And uh, we also use uh, semantic fluency or uh, animal clothes, fruit, vegetables, flowers, and they are equivalent in Nepali. Um, so, uh, so these are these are the uh, sample trials. So, uh, so 
So like these are different ones. So mm -hmm. we have this here, when they have it, so they have just click here. So uh, this is in baseline condition. So it, it was a both in uh, English and Nepali. Mm -hmm. uh, in this one, so the planker, so uh, you can see here, uh, Nepali. So this was also replaced with uh, here uh, in English. So the separate arrow was pointing to the uh, right. So they had to click on the right. So it was pointing on the left, they had to click uh, on this. But that only thing was, so the language condition was uh, uh, L1 or L2. So this is uh, in two task. So green uh, in uh, concrete situation. So we have this green, red, and yellow, blue. So uh, the color, uh, the ink in which it is written, and the word would be in, on different sides. So they have to uh, inhibit uh, the activation, the word activation, and have to respond on the, the ink color. So likewise, it was English, and so for Nepali, we created uh, some name. So likewise, was for all functions. So from this uh, results, uh, we have this verbal fluency results. What we saw in, uh, in fact, this was very uh, uh, even if. Um, the L1 minimum instruction children were instructed only in Nepali, the L1, uh, and L2 minimum instruction students were uh, had exposure to Nepali and also were uh, instructed in English. So their performance was consistently better. Now, if you just see this, so in curve, so in L1 minimum instruction first group, 6.3. And in L2, uh, 8.4. Uh, GA, 4.8, and GA, 6.1. And MA, 5.6, SEL, 7.2. So even in L1, uh, uh, verbal fluency task, uh, the L2 uh, instructed children are being better. Obviously, uh, English, uh, the L1 uh, instructed had 6.9, uh, where L2 had 9.9, A was 5. Here yeah, A was uh, 7.8, S was 6.2, S was 9.4. So obviously English is better. So likewise in uh, semantic fluency also, uh, constantly for every item, uh, they have done better. So for uh, Janavar is Nepali, uh, animal in Nepali. Uh, so it was 9.8, uh, it was uh, 10 on L2. Uh, Luga is clothes, 7.8, and it was 8.9. Pal is fruit, it was 8 there, 8.2, clothes. So tarkari is vegetables, uh, it was 8.3, uh, uh, 10 here. Uh, like flour, food, so it was 3.8, 4.7. So likewise, in English, also they have constantly done that. So uh, now this is where uh, this becomes interesting, uh, even uh, what Alex has So we have cited this. Uh, in where you say, uh, 